up, everyone? How's everyone doing? Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Fridays are dope. I love Friday. Fridays are probably the best day, I think. I don't I don't think I don't think you can have a better a better day. It's like It's like Saturday's cool. Saturdays and Sundays are cool. You know, usually have the day off, the whole day off. Uh, do whatever you want. You can wake up late. You know, you can... They're pretty cool. But Friday, it's got a different kind of vibe. Friday's just different vibe. It's like, it's the end. It's like the end. You know what I mean? It's like the end of the week. You know, you'll be back next week. God willing. God willing. But, uh... It's the end. All right. So, you got you guys probably want to know what the fuck I'm talking about, right? You saw the title, right? Um <laughs> And uh I'm not kidding around when I say <laughs> some people think our vapes are being hacked. Now, those of you who follow me on Instagram have already seen what I was talking about. If you haven't followed me on Instagram, just go over there, Instagram at DIY or Die Vaping. That's my Instagram. It's a great Instagram. It's one of the best Instagrams you can find, especially in vaping. Um, also, don't forget our gaming, our game, my new gaming channel. Um, that's the Twitter right there. Our new, my new gaming channel is something that we've been working on. We haven't been too heavily on it, but we, we've been steady. We've been consistent with it. We do a show every Tuesday it gets released. <coughs> and, um, yeah, it's fun. Go over there if you haven't seen that. But if you've seen my Instagram, you probably know what we're talking about. Um, and that is going to be the topic of the news segment of this show. Uh, remember, the first half of the show, I answer questions about DIY, DIY mixing, uh, vaping, any kind of questions you want to ask me, feel free to ask me. Make sure you tag me at DIY or die in your comment that way I can easily read it such as what Dominic has done right there at DIY or die uh, and it'll uh, highlight itself that way I can read it easy easy more easily um, so ask any kind of questions you want doesn't have to be vaping related but this is a DIY channel and it does keep things consistent any kind of questions on flavors recipe development commercial development uh, you know, making making recipes for to make money, um, making recipes for your friends, making uh, how to do flavor bending, layering, uh, what flavorings I love, what flavorings I hate, stuff like that. Go ahead and ask. Go ahead and ask away. Shout out to everyone. Much love, everyone. Happy to to spend my last few hours of the work week with y'all. I hope some of you guys have some the weekend off or. Maybe uh, you had a couple days off during the week, and that was your weekend, and you got the you got to work this weekend. Nothing wrong with that. I saw you, Daniel D. I saw you took many of your recipes off e-liquid recipes. How come? There is um, we talked about this on the podcast a few times. There was uh, some drama that kind of cropped up with e-liquid recipes, and I just don't feel they're. I just wanted to pull them down for a little bit. You can still get my recipes on my website or on all the flavors. Um, anyone can view the recipes. Uh, feel free. You can share my recipes with anyone you'd like, any of the recipes that are available to the public. Feel free to share them with anyone you want. It's just I don't want to keep them on e recipes for the time being. There's too much shady stuff going on. Um, there was too much shady stuff going on with it, and I'm kind of just fed up with it, and I just want to leave them off there for a little bit. Maybe uh, if some new things and plans come into play over there, um, then I'll put them back up. I'll put them back up over there. But for now, for now, unfortunately, you're just going to have to go to the website or all the flavors, uh, mainly the website. All the flavors doesn't have all my recipes. Um, all the flavors has like a good selection of my newer recipes that kind of been released this year. But my older ones, a lot of them, many of which you guys know me for, 
are mainly just on the website. So you're going to have to go to the website and pick them up. All right. Uh, oh, the podcast, by the way. So I got a strike. Not really a strike. I got a copyright claim on the podcast last night for the intro song, uh, which I was, which is funny because I was talking about how I love the dude that makes those intro songs. The one that you just heard, that's by Method, who's the guy that was on the show last night. The, the intro that I played last night was not by him. It was by some guy that I found on YouTube. Uh, a young kid, too. He's like 19, 20 years old. Makes great, like, like uh, chill, trap, old school hip hop beats. And um, he, like, allows you to use his music for free as long as you tag him in it. And I've been doing that for a while now, but I guess that one track, this is a lot, that one track got me, uh, got claimed. So what I did was I pressed, I clicked on, like, remove this song. And I guess YouTube fucked it up and only put the song in but removed the rest of the audio. So I switched it back to the original, and I'm just going to not take the monetization off of it. Because um, when you get claimed... The, the money that that video makes goes to the claimant, goes to the person making that claim. So at first I was like, fuck that, dude. I don't want to give him my money. But then I was like, you know what? I've used his video. I've used his beats throughout the whole time, all for free. I'll just, you know, I'll just not monet. I'll just give him the monetization um, for that. Uh, why not? Right. He, he, he's helped me out. Uh, he doesn't has no idea who I am, <laughs> um, but he's helped me out. So I figured I might as well kick him back a little bit of cash. So that's the problem with that. That should be updated soon. It's taking a lot longer than it than it than I figured it would. I thought it was only going to take an hour or so, but it's still like in processing. Um, but you can go to the website and and listen to the podcast, or if you have iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play Radio, all the podcasting rest, uh, websites like Podbean. There's a whole bunch of podcasting apps. If you have any of them. My podcast is on there, In the Mix Vaping Podcast, and you'll get the shows when they come up in the download, and you can listen uh, to the replay all the time. There, there's nothing uh, that's blocking that. So you can uh, you can still listen to the show. You just can't watch the show uh, until that's fixed. But once it's fixed, I'll put that right up. What platform is the podcast on? I tried watching it last night, and there was no sound. Oh, yes. Well, that has that. has There's your answer, bud. Uh, where are we? Finally heard back from the job I've been after for two months, and I got it. Congrats, Dom. $50,000 a year pre-tax and full bennies, including tuition and fees for the college. That is a great, great job that you got. Congrats, man. I'm very happy for you. I'm very, very happy for you. Um, that is excellent. That is excellent. $50,000 pre-tax. That's great, man. Full benefits. That's like a 10, that's like 10, $20,000 right there. Um, especially if you have like, if you plan on getting a wife and kids anytime soon, dude, that's so much money right there alone, plus free tuition and fees. So they're going to pay for you to go to school and get extra and just, you know, boost up that resume, man. That's excellent. Good good for you, dude. Good for you. When do you start? Soon? That's always fun. That's always fun. It's really difficult. Like, every time I see someone getting a job that I know, and they get, like, a really good job that they're happy about, I'm so happy for them because it's really difficult uh, in the United States right now to lock down a good job. Like a really good, steady paying, hard working, but steady paying job. It's very difficult. The job security in this country is at an all time low ever. And like worse than the depression. This is really bad uh, in terms of job security. A lot of people can just lose their jobs at any day. So when someone hires you and they want to give you the whole package, that means they're going to keep you around for a while. You know, that means that they have, they're investing in you to bring them money for the company. And that's good to hear. Good shit, man. I'm I'm having trouble watching your video on my computer because my e-cig hacked it. <laughs> yeah, we're going to get into that in just a second. Best way to mix up large batches for sale like one liter. Oh, what's up, Jack? Shout out to Jack Vapes. That reminds me. Shout out to Jack Vapes if you guys like... Um the coils and, and uh, hardware, more, more hardware focused vaping stuff. Jack's a great guy. He's got a great channel. Um, he did an interview with me. I was, uh, he interviewed me quite a bit ago, it feels like. And uh, he also is starting to sell these, uh, these coils. He's doing like these pre-made coils, which is fucking cool. Uh, staggered fuse, Clapton's stainless steel. These are all pretty much stainless steel. This is a transformer. This, uh, let me get my focus going. 
This is the transformer coils. Just nicely clean and packaged. Here's the staggered fuse Clapton's. I've used a few of them already. Staggered fuse Clapton's. I wonder if I can get closer. Oh, I can get pretty damn close with this camera. Nice. Let's look at the transformers. The transformers look cool. I want to use them, uh, but I want to put them in my goon. There we go. Get that light on there. Put them on my goon. What else we got here? Fuse Claptons. You all know what Fuse Claptons look like. Here's the aliens. Aliens, I think, are my favorite coil. I'm a huge fan of aliens. I think they give really great flavor. Well, Fuse Claptons and aliens. I think. And then he, he also has these uh, fuse clapped in just like nice just wire, which is what I like because um, you can pretty much just wrap up whatever you need. And I like to do more wraps than normal. I like it a little higher of an ohm because I use it on, um, I use like DNA 40 devices. And um, if you have like a higher ohm, they don't go very high in wattage. So you have to take, uh, you have to pretty much. You have to pretty much um, rely on the voltage of the battery at that point. Just max out your voltage. Um, so we actually use this one. Actually, is the bed de battery dead on here? Damn, I'm unprepared. I'm unprepared. And these coils are awesome. Oh, battery's dead. Can't use this mod, unfortunately. One thing about high voltage vaping is that it kind of zaps your battery pretty quickly. Um, so shout out to Jack Vapes, man. Thank you for sending me these quotes. Send me a shitload of them. And I've been running through them and uh, enjoying them quite a bit. The stainless steel, which, which is great for unregulated, which I, I didn't know. I always thought stainless steel was a temperature control thing. But it's not. You can put them on unregulated mods. And then um, it's, all, it's awesome. So I put them on my Titan. And uh, I want to I want to build my goon with one of these transformer ones. I've never used a transformer coil before. What's that rant you were talking about last night? I will get into a rant um, a little bit later after the hacking story. Uh, but I do have a rant for for sure. Wayne has a ton of recipes and articles and stuff as this year that is not on ATF. That is why you have to sub for DIY or die. Yes, I don't. I'm doing my best to now put everything that I do on all the flavors and link it through the website. So if I write like a flavor note, it should, from now, it, it'll have an actual recipe that, uh, that you can view on all the flavors. So if you don't, if you're not a subscriber or a member, I should say, to DIYOrDieVaping.com, you won't be able to read like the membership stuff, but you'll still be able to get all the recipes. And that's why I've been doing that. When people... Wayne, but people already have them and repost your recipes. I never use DLR, ELR, but I've seen the, uh, them posted by other people. Yeah, that's the thing, though. They can post my recipes. I don't care what they do with my recipes. Um, you know, just don't steal them. Don't, like, start selling them. Uh, there, there, I have my reasons for doing it. I have my reasons for doing it. I can, I can, there was something that happened that could have gotten me in trouble, and I needed to make sure that uh, that doesn't happen again. And it's just to kind of just led up to it. But if, I'm not saying don't use eLiquorRecipes.com either. I'm not saying that. It's a wonderful service for, for new DIYers to get into the game and look at recipes, popular recipes, and start mixing away, um, getting your name out there. Unfortunately, if you're a mixer who is going to continue to release recipes and, and gather a following and gather a name, you have a much higher chance of getting ripped off uh, because these companies know. You go to eLiquorRecipes.com. And uh, you can just have your picking, any recipe you want, and make as much money as you want off of them. <clears throat> Yo, man, is Flavor West pie crust a lot different than TPAs? No. Well, yes, it is a lot different. Mixed up obsidian, I didn't like it that much. Maybe it's because I've used TPAs pie crust. I get a sharp, not very pleasant note. Um, yeah, that could be the TPA pie crust. You could be, you might not like uh, Flavora cookie dough. It's got a lot of that cookie dough in there. Um, but let it sit as well. Don't kind of you let it sit a little bit. You'll probably like it a lot better. How soon will rose, rose milk be available at Chef's Flavors? It'll be available at July 1st, I believe. So in about a week, you'll be able to get it at Chef's. 
everyone go get it in the UK if you if you want to support what I do and you want a few uh, one shots. Monday, 8 a.m., thanks for the kind words, and it's IT field, so if law school fails through, I have a solid career. Oh, you're going to law school, and they're paying for law school? Damn, dude, that's a good gig. That's a really good gig. Get me a job. <laughs> get me a fucking job. I'll get done with this bullshit. Remix the recipe from a local shop for remix month. A strawberry waffle. Waffle me this on ATF. Tell me what you think when you, when you get the time. Um, <clears throat> sure, I will definitely do that. Today we're going to be remixing French Dude. Um, and that's what we're making today. French Dude. Hi, Wayne. Thinking about buying EPT DNA 60. How's the battery life compared to your DNA 75? The DNA 60 uh, actually has a little worse battery life than the DNA 75 because the DNA 75 doesn't allow you to overvolt. You get the weak battery symbol when that happens. The DNA 60 doesn't give you that. So that's the benefit of the DNA 60. It's just a much better device. I highly recommend the, the e Petite DNA 60. I love that thing. It's so tiny. It's got a great chip and it just works. You know, if, you, if you're going out for like more than eight hours, which is rare, then you can just bring another battery with you and you're, and you're good to go. Did you get a Soul S yet? I did not get the Soul S yet. Uh, um, I'm trying to look it up. I see that they're available at Cheeky Vapes, which is in the UK for 110 bucks. 110 bucks. Should I get it? Should I pick it up? It does look nice. I like the little belled cap on there. It's perfect for a squonker. You could put some big ass coils in there. Huh, maybe I will pick it up. No one buy it. That's so I can have it. <laughs> what made you become a five hundred dollar a month Patreon to <laughs> I am not a five hundred dollar a month Patreon. Uh to Ruby Roo's Patreon. I can't believe people are doing that. Like I I I can understand like her doing it. Obviously she's gonna do it. Um all you gotta do is just say, YouTube isn't paying me as much anymore and then make a Patreon and people will fucking pay for it. People will give them money for it. Um you know, you want to know what my Patreon is? It's my membership, and you get a lot for it. There's a lot of work that goes into it. It's an actual service. It's not pay me money, and I'll give you a, a vlog every once a month and some stickers, maybe a, a shout-out in a video. What? You know how much HBO is? HBO is like 10 bucks monthly, and you get Game of Thrones. You get Silicon Valley. You get Real Time. You get Last Week Tonight. You get... Uh, vinyl you get amazing shows like hundreds of amazing shows that are like top-notch produced and they're making millions of dollars right they're making millions of dollars for 10 bucks a month for a cheap amount of money so if you're going to pay someone that that same amount of money you should make sure that you're getting a good a good value from it a good value so that's why I think patrons are a little weird when people, I don't have a problem with them, make a Patreon, but use it in the way it should be used. Like if you're an artist and someone wants to pay you, uh, you know, five bucks a month and you paint them something or you kind of do something where they get something in return uh, or you're a musician and you release your albums monthly or you release tracks monthly, like stock footage tracks where people can use. Like it's an awesome service to be able to do that. I'm a huge fan of crowdfunding and like, uh, uh, like crowdfunding and crowdsourcing. I love that stuff because it allows you guys, it's basically what I do with my, with my website. It allows you guys to support underground artists, underground artists and content creators. And unfortunately, some people take advantage of that. And the reason they take advantage of that is because people pay for it. If you look at Philip DeFranco's channel, Philip DeFranco does like a regular kind of talking head channel. His Patreon is worth millions millions and millions of dollars. I watched him uh, go live today 
do a live stream and he allows super chat and as you guys can see super chat means you pay money and out and your chat goes to the top so someone who has a lot of followers their feed is constantly moving and one way to get your your questions noticed is to super chat and people were donating hundred dollars fifty dollars seventy five dollars like every second money was just rolling in and i'm like what the fuck is this these people are out of their minds they they really do pay stuff like that so hey man if, if it's not the, the person who creates the Patreon, it's the person who pays for it. That's ultimately the fool, right? That's ultimately the fool. If, if it's something that doesn't have much value, maybe you get value out of it. Maybe you see there's value in it. But I, I personally think that you sh there should be a little bit more to it. Um, but I do love Patreon. I don't want to say I don't, like, I don't like it. I don't know why we went on that tangent, but we did. Wayne, by the way, tomorrow a friend will buy 60 mils of bro nuts. What percentage should I share with you? <laughs> Go ahead, man. Keep the, you can keep the profits, bro. Keep the profits on that. Hey, guys. I don't have... I have zero... I have zero problem. Zero problem with you selling any recipes. Any recipes. To your friends, to your families, to people that you're trying to get off of uh, smoking. I do have no problem with that. Just take my recipes. Make as much money as you want. Uh, on your friends and family and, and cohorts. It just If you make a business, don't fucking do that because then you're pretty much just a fuck. Then you're just a loser at that point. You know, uh, do, Don't become a business and then start profiting off of someone else's work. But absolutely, if you're just a consumer and you're just a mixer and you're just like, I need to, I need to buy uh, $100 worth of flavorings next month. I'm running low. Uh, maybe I'll sell a, a, a few bottles here and there to... Um, you know, to, to recoup those costs, dude, 100% do that. That's the best way to, to DIY vape is to sell your e-liquid to your friends and family to cover the cost of your flavorings. I don't know why more people don't do it. And you don't even just have to sell your own. You can sell mine. Go right ahead. You can sell anyone's. No one really has a problem with it. It's just the businesses that take them and, and you know, they register as a business. They say that they're, own, they're their own entity. Then there's an issue there, you know. Once you cross over into taxes and businesses and trademarks, there needs to be some kind of compensation. And that is, uh, we could talk a little bit more about that in a second. Do you have a coupon for Nick River? I do not, but I could probably get one. I could probably get one. I'll ask the dude if he can give me like a DIY or die kind of coupon thing, and I'll put that in the Facebook group. Um, I'll ask Grant. Origin Little 16. I'll check it out. I always wanted an Origin. What about the Serpent Mini Suck My Mod? It seems great. Take a look. Yeah, I saw his video on it. Uh, I know the Serpent Mini is is a pretty popular... It's a pretty popular R R D RTA. Excuse me, RTA. But what I don't understand is what's the difference? So here is the regular one. This is the one that I know. This is the one that most people know. Serpent Mini. Let's look at the deck here. Uh, where is it? I want to look at the deck. Okay, so there's the deck here. Nice, I like that. Now let's look at his. The Suck My Mod version. Is it just the logo? That's the, is that what's going on there? It's just a different logo on it? That's what it kind of looks like. Oh no, it's a little different. It's a little different. It's got an ultimate cap. It's got an uglier logo. That font is terrible. But the ultimate cap, and there's the difference in the deck. It's got like a, a clamp style deck. Oh, and it's got two. It's got two air flows. Wait, oh wait, no, that's juice flow. That's where the juice comes up. So you put your coil horizontally through it, and then the juice comes up through there. Okay, I see. I see. Oh, there's the. Is that their logo? Suck my mod. They should have just had the Suck My Mod on there because the Serpent Mini logo looks ugly. What the fool? How does uh, Todd Todd say it? What the fool? What the fool? What the fool? All right. It does, look, it does look nice. It's cheap, too. It's only 30 bucks. Nice. I'm probably not going to get one, though. Hell yeah, bro. Keep up the great work. Still want a sticker. You'll be getting stickers hopefully soon. 
get the origin little 16 build a single 28 uh six wrap on the second smallest air that does sound nice that does sound right up my alley maybe i'll have to find them <clears throat> where are we where are we dog this is probably a frequent question, but what is your favorite recipes that you've created over the years? My favorite is right in right now is obsidian. I literally it's all I vape is obsidian. I can't stop vaping it. I don't even change it. I don't even fuck around with it. I just vape obsidian. It's meant to be a layer, but uh, I vape it just the way it is. Um, I also think rhodonite's probably my still one of my best recipes. It's hard to say. I really think obsidian is really really good though. Really complex, but. It's, it's complex in a different way. Um, and I also like Misty. I think Misty is very underrated. Blackout, um, Top of New York. I have a lot of good recipes that I, that not many newer mixers know about because I don't really talk about them as much. And they're kind of hidden away. Now they're not on e-liquid recipes anymore. So uh, you kind of just have to find them on the website. But I would say my favorite is Obsidian right now. I was a huge fan of Cuprian when I first made that. But I vaped the shit out of it, and I'm kind of sick of it. I'm probably going to get that way with Obsidian and move on to something else. Um, it's just so good. I also have been vaping this stuff. I bought this stuff today. And this is actually not bad. Crack pie. Because I don't think we're going to be able to get Cosmic Fog's milk and honey. I don't think I can do it, man. I, it's It has stumped me. And I want to figure out something else that maybe is popular that we can mix up. But right now it's looking like uh, it's looking like no go on on milk and honey. I thought I figured it out. I thought I knew what it was. I tasted banana. I tasted peanut butter, marshmallow, but they're doing something different. I don't know what the fuck they're doing to get that honey flavor. And it's not flavor West honey, because I'm using flavor West honey, and it just doesn't taste that way. It's like close. It's flavor West honey is like. They might be using it, but something else in conjunction with it that give it that flavor. Did you have rose milk brewing in that Manson jar? Manson jar. <laughs> Mason jar. All right. Any other questions? Have you seen Dome V2? Korean made RTA. Super rare and handsome. It's the Dome... V2 RDA. I have not heard of that. Made by Inushu? Inushu. Oh, wait. This is this is the company out in Canada. I was going to order some from here, too. They had an octopus on sale. This is what you're talking about? The Dome V2? I mean, it doesn't look too special. Yo, to be honest, guys... I'm not a big fan of Ultim or plastic any top caps. I get a flavor from it. The heat, I get a flavor from it. Like it's not, it's not a, what the fuck is this? I can't even uh, show that picture. How do I, how do I pull that picture up? Oh, there we go. Look at this. What is going on here? What the hell is going on? That is too crazy. That's too crazy. Get out of here with that. $239? What the fuck? That's crazy. And of course it's sold out. You can't even get it. <laughs> uh, it does look nice though. But I'm not a fan of plastic top caps. I get a flavor from it. Um, that's the problem. It's the reason why I'm not using my O Jenny. Is because there's a terrible flavor that comes from that top cap. And I have to replace that top cap with a metal one. Nalu RDA, I have, I actually have that one. I actually have the Nalu RDA. I don't really enjoy it. You spoken about Dark Star? I'm a bit late to the party. Yes, we talked about that last night. So when the podcast comes up, uh, you'll be able to check that out. But that we talked about that on the podcast. I don't really want to talk about it again. Please try Pop these clones. Um, I don't, I don't have it near me, but maybe I'll buy some later on. How's the Serial Killer remix going? Not, not so good. Um, I did bring out lemonade cookie out here because I wanted to see if this was the... There's a lemon that they're using, and I can't figure out what it is. And maybe it's lemonade cookie? I don't know. C 
Could be. Could be. This tastes interesting. I'm going to I'm going to mix this up by itself tonight and see what this tastes like. That actually tastes really good. It's got a little bit of a lime to it too. That could be it. But I can't find the f fucking flavor that they're using. It's difficult. All right. So <laughs> So look at this, okay? So just let's take a look at this really quick. Let's take a look at this really quick. You guys know Aspen Valley Vapes. Aspen Valley ba Vapes was the guys who created that DIY is dangerous. So don't DIY, buy our juice instead. Same company. Same fucking company. And now, now, I, I take back every, everything bad I, I have ever said about Aspen Valley Vapes. Because this is breaking news right here. Hackers are have infiltrated that the e-cigarette industry and they're now hacking our e-cigarettes are hackers coming for the vaping industry this is by andy flynn let's see if he's the same person that made that other article the diy article uh, of course you can't do so of course you can't okay uh, are hackers coming for the vaping industry we live in a day and age where everything we know is done through the benefit of technology but as we continue the advancement of technology it has come with a price. Security researchers specialized in low-level computer uh, security demonstrated how e-cigarettes can easily be, easily be changed into tools to hack your computer. How the hack is done. A presentation... <laughs> this is so stupid. A presentation was given by Ross Bevington in London who, dis who displayed how an e-cigarette could be used to attack your computer by tricking it into believing the computer has a mouse or keyboard attached. Once the e-cigarette is plugged into your computer, the infected e-cigarettes can inject a part of malware which could... Make your computer easily susceptible to download files that can see all private information for company now in the case of malware requires your computer to be unlocked. Uh, poison tap is a very similar style of a tap. <laughs> Look at the CI. <laughs> Get out of here, this stupid thing. No, I don't want to fucking talk to you. Oh my god, this website. Look at this. <laughs> Like, <laughs> this is so dumb. So, <laughs> should you stop vaping because of the threat of a hack? In layman terms, no. Just because hackers have found another way to steal your private information <laughs> does not mean that this is frequently done. Uh, yet, there has yet to be a report of a person being hacked or by charging their e-cigarette through their computer. But that does not mean in the future that will be none. With that said, to, to further protect yourself from the potential danger of e-cigarette infecting your computer, you should charge your e-cigarettes through power outlet instead of your computer. And I guess this this here is the uh, the demonstration of what's going on. <laughs> he plugged in an eye stick. <laughs> this is so stupid. <laughs> This is so stupid. This is the, the prize winning, the prize winning journalism that coming, coming out of Aspen Valley fuckhead vapes. Um, <laughs> so there you go, guys. Hackers want to break into your e-cigarettes to steal your private information. So if you purchased an e-cigarette, do not plug that into your computer. Because they want your credit cards and they want your recipes. They're mainly doing it to steal your recipes. They want to steal your recipes. They want to know the. They can figure out how the re, how the e liquid in your atomizer was made. So all they do is they 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 put the hack in your e cigarette, and when you plug that into your computer, there's a decoder that's in the atomizer, and it decodes decodes guy in a mask balaclava mask typing on a computer, he, he can decode the messages, the, the, it, it kind of comes in like hieroglyphs, they, like the matrix, they kind of rain down in like a green text, and he's just sitting there, you know, vaping away, he's vaping, uh, he's probably vaping something like, uh, like Candy King, he's probably vaping Candy King, like Swedish Fish, and he's vaping Candy King, Swedish Fish, green text is falling down, and he's reading off your recipes, and then he's gonna take that, we figured this out on the Facebook page, 
they gonna they they take that information. They say, okay, Wayne, he's vaping obsidian. Uh, there's cookie dough, four percent cookie dough. Oh, okay, there's a little bit of RY4. They take that information. They send it back to Russia. They send that information back to Russia. So the Russian vape industry now is is using counterfeit recipes for their e-liquid lines. And Putin himself, he vapes. Obviously, he vapes. He vapes something more like a mechma. He vapes like a, a, a like a, a like an old school kind of like um, a Hades mechma with a little Igo W on top, and that's what he vapes. And and Putin, Putin is, he's commanding all this. This is his doing. So the ultimate goal here is to just increase the economic power of Russia, and it just again one up. Uh, the uh, the American states again, just just for the simple fact of doing, just for the simple fact of being better than America. That's the ultimate goal. So they're they're doing this all through your vapes. And to be honest, I'm pretty sure because I know Hillary Clinton vapes. I'm pretty sure that's how they hacked into the DNC and they got all the files. And because she vapes and she wanted to upgrade her mod, uh, she was using <laughs> she was using a DNA uh, 30 when the DNA 30s were around. And uh, she had to upgrade her firmware, so Hillary Clinton plugged it in, and that's how I'm. I'm a, it, it, Aspen Valley needs to look into that. Okay, they need to dive more into the connection between Russia, Hillary Clinton, and hacking into their mods to get to get that classified documents out of the DNC. And now James Comey's in trouble because he vapes and he got hacked through his vapes, and uh, now he has to testify and all this stuff. So who knows? Does Trump? I don't know if Trump vapes. We haven't seen any, any classified in information comes, coming out of him. So we don't know. Okay. So there you go. Watch out for your uh, hackers hacking your mods. It's a serious thing. Russia, they want your recipes. And unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, this guy, I mean, he means business. <laughs> he means business, dude. He means business. He's not fucking around. He wants your recipes. Why is he wearing a mask and gloves? <laughs> he's on a computer. <laughs> it's not like he needs to like, it's not like he's confronting anyone. And so he doesn't need a mask and gloves. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> All right. That's funny. That is so funny. Good job. Good, good journalism. Good journalism. They they are just the best. Let's find that DIY one. Let's find the DIY article, cause that's a good one too. Man, this is the best. This is the best vaping website ever, dude. There's no better. Oh my god, twenty vaping memes. Twenty vaping memes, every vapor can relate to. <laughs> This is like BuzzFeed. This is the BuzzFeed of vaping. It seems like there's a meme for just about everything these days. I don't always vape. Oh, wait. Yes, I do. <laughs> that, is, <laughs> that's, that is not how this meme works. God damn it. Uh, look at this. Tony vaping memes. <laughs> this is so fucking stupid. Oh, my God. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> what else? <laughs> this is fun. I'm having fun doing this. All right. I'm having fun doing this. Uh, let's see if we can find another good one. Let's see if we can find another good one here. Is there a way I can search their blog? It won't let me. It just keeps bringing this up. Oh, well. That might be it, guys. With uh... <laughs> yeah, I don't see it anywhere. They they put out a lot of articles though. That's for sure. Uh, so that's something something worth. That's that's something. Uh, there's some kind of worth there. How come Brownstone isn't on eSig Express? Where can I get a link to the recipe? I think it's sold out. I think it's sold out. The recipe is... Oh, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. Brownstone is... Uh, is Brownstone uses the... Um, the old Inuwares milk chocolate. And I think we just pulled that. Yeah. 
we pretty much just pulled it. It's it's not good with. It's not good with new Anywhere's milk chocolate. It's just unvapable. So we pulled it. Uh, and I wouldn't even give you the recipe. It's not good. But it's basically the chocolate milkshakes recipe. So if you look up, go on my website and you look up chocolate milkshakes, that's the recipe for brownstone. But it uses Anywhere's milk chocolate V1, which isn't available anymore. You can probably use like Flavor's milk chocolate or Jungle Flavor's milk chocolate. Um, use it at like 1% or 2% and you should be good with that. But... It's not the same. It's anywhere's milk chocolate was just really good. What does the P on your hat mean? Oh, it's Philly. That's Philly, boy. Looking at the podcast schedule on your member site, live mixing Friday isn't on there. Yes, um, I need to redo the schedule because the schedule's old and I haven't changed it in a while. Monday is Noted Podcast, which is with Chiba Stiba, ML Nikon, and um, who else is on that show? And ID10T. Uh, Tuesday is nothing. Wednesday is extracted. No, I'm sorry. Tuesday is no life gaming podcast. Wednesday, uh, is extracted only for members. And that comes out. It doesn't come out every week, even though I try to get it every week, but it's like, it just comes out whenever it's out, but that comes out on Wednesdays. Thursdays in the mix podcast, which is live 9 30 PM. Eastern Monday is a live show as well. Tuesday, Wednesday are not live shows. And then Sun, and then Friday is live mixing, and then Sunday is mix life with Koppel um, and the other guys, Concrete River, and uh, yeah. And we should be having an, uh, we should be having two more shows come to the sh- come to the fold. Hardwick show's coming back, but it's going to be a new show and then another show uh, as well. So we're doing big things over here. If you guys want to know where all the money goes for, for the membership and stuff, it goes to producing this kind of content. It's not cheap to host podcasts that are two, three hours long. You know, it's, it costs money, man. A lot of this stuff costs money. So if you, want to know, if you want to know how we do things, that's how we do it. And then maybe I should get into that next. <clears throat> He's doing a live hack. There's a, a recipe called um, apple butter that you'll probably like. I also have um, an apple oatmeal cookie recipe, which you'll probably like. It's like an apple caramel oatmeal cookie um, on my website. So you can check those out. That Duchess remix recipe is freaking incredible. Much love, dude. Glad you enjoy it, my man. They stole that meme you created. Maybe they watched this show, man. Maybe they watched DIY or Die. And uh, they saw your meme. They couldn't resist. I formatted my PC, lost all my copies of, from the magazine. I can't find the copies in my downloads or on the website. What can I do? All my payments have gone through. Never stop my membership. Shoot me an email and I'll hook you up. Shoot me an email. Um, Wayne at DIYDieVaping.com. Or you can do support at DIYDieVaping.com. Either or. Which vendor has the cleanest, tasteless nicotine? I like Liquid Barnes nicotine. Never had a problem with Liquid Barnes nicotine. They hook me up. Um, I, I should say that outright. They give me free nicotine, VG, and PG to use all the time. Um, that's just part of the deal, you know? I, they, they've been supportive of, of me since I first started my channel. So one thing that we said is, like, if you send me your VG, PG, nicotine... That's stuff that I don't have to buy, and it'll always be on camera. I'll always be using it, and that's the deal we do. They don't pay me any money. We don't have any kind of monetary payment going on. They give me bases, and they give me nicotine, and I fucking love it. I do not have any problem with it. If I did have a problem with it, I'd be like, eh, no thank you, and I'd go ask another vendor because I can pretty much ask anyone. They'll probably give me nicotine and base, but right now, Liquid Barn hooks me up. And I have no plans of switching at all. I love what they're doing, and it's just very easy with these spouts which is mainly the reason why I really like it. Um, even if it was like a little bit less quality, I'd still use it for the, just the spouts alone. They make it so easy to just... Bleep, bleep. Um, but the cleanest, I, I would... The one, the nicotine that has impressed me the most was Vapor's Tech. Vapor's Tech nicotine was so good. It was just so invisible. And uh, I really enjoyed it. And I was at, when I had that, I was also using uh liquid barn vgpg so there's something in that as well you know it wasn't just 
it wasn't just their nicotine. It was Vapor's Tech nicotine, but with Liquid Bar and VGPG. Um, but I love it. I, I, I love uh, Vapor's Tech is just excellent nicotine. Um, I had a problem with Wizard Labs kind of oxidizing a little bit too quickly, but that is because they don't have like twisty tops, or at least when I bought from them, they didn't. They had like caps, and I I didn't bother like pouring it into amber bottles and storing it away properly. I kind of just had the the bottles just sitting in the cabinets, and um, I had a problem with it, it with it oxidizing more quickly than others. Uh, not that's not to say it's bad nicotine though, and it was pretty good nicotine. New nicotine was excellent, excellent nicotine from them. Um, nicotine River is pretty good. Uh, Carolina Extract is pretty good. Um, so you really can't go wrong with any of those companies. You really can't go wrong. These companies know what they're doing with nicotine these days. They're not, a lot of it is just Nick Select anyway. You know what I mean? They're just rebranding Nick Select. Uh, Carolina Extract does like some weird kind of super critical CO2 extraction with their nicotine, which is supposedly a better way to, to keep it. So, um, if you, a lot of people really speak highly of Carolina Extract. I'm a big fan of Vapors Tech and, uh, Liquid Barn, of course. Way in which VG is the best I have used Amazons in both cities. Like I said, I, I, I'm a big fan of, uh, I will say, uh, Liquid Bar. I will say, uh, Amazon's Essential Depot is the VG that I've had the biggest problems with. It has like a higher water content and it tastes like sweaty. Um, they don't keep as well. So that's a little bit free there. I did a whole thing in, in the Mix Magazine. I should probably re-release that as an article. So people can see it. Because I, I, I completely reviewed all of the nicotines. And I completely reviewed all of the bases as well. I think all of my bases are on Vaping Underground, actually. I think there's an article that I've written on Vaping Underground for uh, bases. How can I try all the Luca Barnes for free? <laughs> For European super clean nicotine, try uh, Pink Mule. Try, they can try Pink Mule. Okay, there you go, Pink Mule. I bought Liquid Barnes nicotine. Do you have to purchase the spouts separately? Yes, I think, I think you do now. I think if you just write in the the note, they can put one in there for you. They don't ship them with spouts anymore. I find that Nude Nick smooth salts are the best as far as being smooth and no throat hit. So, I want to talk about quickly before we start to mix. Yeah, we got a little time. I want to talk about haters. Haters and the art medium. Haters and the art medium. Because some people... I've gotten a few questions from some concerned fellows who have been getting somewhat of a negative response on some of their work, on their recipes. Now, in any kind of online media, any kind of online anything, there's going to be haters. Now, I'm not talking about people who see your stuff negatively and critique it negatively. They'll say, they'll give you reasons why they don't enjoy your work. That is 100% excellent. That stuff's great. Negative critiques are awesome and you wanna take those in stride. You wanna really understand a good critique and a good criticism of your work because it only makes you better. Now then there's haters, which is pretty much, hey, fucking faggot, hey, you fucking piece of shit, you fucking loser, uh, stuff like that, you know? Just completely just, De de derailing you for whatever it is that you've done and the reason for that the reason they do that there's two reasons one is for attention one's just for attention they just want to get your attention they see you as someone who has some type of authority um in whatever it is you're doing they see you as someone who they they see something of you so they want your attention but they don't care if it's a negative or positive attention. They just want your, they just want you to notice them in any way possible. And then there's the other side of it, which is for their own gain. They are either, you know, they, they want to bring you down because they think that's going to bring you higher. You know, they want to name call you because they think that if, if more people kind of name call you and bring you down, then that gives them more of a room to kind of raise up and do their own thing. 
Um, and then you just have like trolls who just just do it for just to fuck around with you, which is like not even that big of an issue. Trolls aren't that big of a problem because they don't they don't know really. There's really no effect of, of, of a troll. Um, but the haters are it's a different story. So you're always if, if you are in an artist, artistic medium, whether it's mixing, painting, music, anything that you ex you have to express yourself through your art and through your work, you're going to get haters. You're going to get people who are going to try and do their best to put you down and make you feel like shit and make you want to quit and make you give up. Now, the, the, the problem that some people have with them is that they want to, they, they either can't kind of differentiate between a, ne a good negative criticism and a hater. And so they kind of get mixed up and they, they'll respond to these. Um, they'll respond to these allegations in, in kind of a way that gets them riled up and it gets that reaction that they are looking for. You know, they just want to, like, get a rise out of you. They just want to put you on a, on a defensive. Um, so if you run into stuff, stuff like that, if you run into haters, you know, if you run into people who are trying to put you down, your best option is to just ignore it. So you need to really understand the difference between a good criticism and a negative criticism and a, and a hater. You need, to make, you need to be able to make that distinction. So if you see that stuff, it will... You can't really do anything about it. You just have to let it ride. Now, I'm sure that you guys, I, in this, in this medium, in mixing, me, personally, Wayne, and y'all Recklaw, I'm the most criticized e-liquid mixer in the entire world. There's no one who gets more criticisms than me because my recipes are out there. They are of the most popular name because that's just what DIY it is. It grew that way. Uh, you know, I didn't have, I didn't make that choice happen. That's just how things kind of rolled. So because of that, more eyes are on me and there's more, there's just an alt, there's just more haters, there's more lovers, there's more support and there's more hate. That's just how it grows. So it's difficult for someone like me to differentiate between someone who is a fan and someone who's supportive, like really just supportive, and someone who thinks my work is objectively good. Also on the other end, someone who's a hater who just wants to, you know, they just don't like me for whatever it is. You know, they don't like my face. They don't like the way I move and talk and they, they want to detract from me or someone who's trying to give me negative criticism. So it's, you get it on both ends. You don't just get it on the, on, the, on the other end once you start to really get eyes on you. You get it on both ends. You can't tell between, you know, I have to, uh, I don't know if you guys know this, but I have multiple accounts, multiple accounts, many, many different accounts that I use to beta test a lot of recipes, which I think is always funny because I'll beta test a recipe and uh, there, was, there was one situation of this happening. I'll, I beta tested a recipe, and there was a, a few people who really enjoyed it. And then I released the recipe, and then that person was like, no way, I don't like this recipe. <laughs> so I thought that was funny. And uh, they were not a very good gauge of beta testing after that. Um, but it's difficult because that's what I'm leading into. You get, it's really hard to get good critiques from anyone. And that's a big problem in mixing right now is getting good reviews. Getting good reviews on your recipes, getting people to mix your recipes, and getting good reviews. Uh, and they don't, not just good as in like, oh, that's a great recipe. Good as in a good criticism. Something that you can actually take back and learn from and build upon. It's hard to get that. A lot of people just don't know how to do them for one. And then others just, they just don't give reviews. They're, they'll just mix your recipe and they'll say, well, it's pretty good and nah, I didn't really like it. And, uh, you know, it's, it's difficult to get some good criticisms. Um, so you need to just for, don't worry about the haters because they're always going to be there, especially if you're starting to do something and you're starting to gain some momentum. You're going to have someone that, that's going to come along and try to fuck your day up. You know, uh, there, there's multiple people. There's multiple people that, I've in, that I'm in contact with that just constantly talk shit. They just constantly talk shit. They have no reason to do so other than trying to bring it down, trying to degrade its integrity of what I do. So you can't react to that because once you react to that, then you notice it upon, th then, then everyone sees that you're noticing that. Everyone sees that slight insecurity, you know what I mean? And it's difficult. Sometimes you just can't help it. Sometimes you might have a bad day, you see something, you react to it. But your best move is to just ignore it, let it roll on, you know? If you really believe in what you do, you really have to just let it move on. And, and your belief in that will push you along and just make you produce better. 
and uh, you know, there's there's an there's an an objective uh, quality that you'll have that's good if you just keep ex- gaining experience. Like, there's nothing that you can do in any kind of art medium that gets you worse as time moves on. The more you do it, you always get better. Whether it's in any in any art medium, mixing, painting, music, all that stuff, you'll always get better. You never get worse. So there's there's going to be a point where you're just objectively good at what you're doing. So that that'll give you some more confidence to help you uh, kind of combat um, haters and, and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, trolls and stuff, don't worry about them. They don't really matter, you know. Um, they don't really matter. They don't really matter. There's a lot. There's a it's it, when you see like competition, try to like really come at you and, and, and talk some shit. And this is the reason I bring this up is because there was a a post on Reddit the other day where we found out that one of these smaller DIY YouTube channels was making alternative accounts and saying some stupid shit about me and DIY or dot. And uh, it, it's easy to see it was an, an alt account created by this channel. I'm not going to say the name, not going to say the post. If you really want to figure it out, it's on Reddit. You can go find it somewhere. But uh, like I said, y- you just got to take it in stride. It's going to happen. It just means you're doing good. It just means it just means you're getting attention and you're going to get that detraction. And this goes for not just mixing. This goes for everything, you know, any kind of media. And it's a big part of why people don't start it. Uh, the Internet is a very scary place to someone who, who might have a lot of insecurities and, and, and doesn't take words like that easily. Um, it's scary to want to really put yourself out there and release your own true art, release your own true feelings upon in a video, um, you know, in anything. It, it, it takes a lot of courage to do that. But once you do and you get the hang of it, you'll see. It's like, it, it's really, you're just doing what you want. No one remembers a hater's name. You never remember a hater's name. So you just remember that point, you know. They'll, you just don't know who they are. No one knows who a hater is. Name one hater that you know. You can't because you just don't know them. You don't know what their names are. They don't matter, right? You kind of just, they're, they're kind of just like a, like a loud, kind of just like a honking horn. Just wah, wah, wah. You don't know who's behind that driver's seat. You just hear them just barking away. And you try to ignore it or you move on. So there you go. I just wanted to talk a little bit about that. I find that interesting that um, mixing kind of has the same kind of dilemmas as other art, other arts. This crack pot is not bad, but I think it's time that we have to mix. Hey, Metal Gear Vapor! Metal Gear Vapor in the chat. What's up, dude? Nice to see you, man. I haven't seen you in a while. What happened to you? Where have you been, man? It's been a while. Look at you. Metal Gear Vapor, he used to be a uh, YouTube reviewer. Used to be a YouTube reviewer. Small one, but reviewed nonetheless. Reviewed nonetheless. Was doing a great job. But then it seemed like you kind of uh, stopped reviewing. I don't know. I haven't, I haven't seen any reviews out of you. Good to see you're back in action. When did you start vaping and what was your first device setup? I started vaping a long time ago. Uh, it, my first device setup was like a... a an old ego pen thing with, uh, I want to say a pro tank on top. Like my first like device where I was like, like I didn't have cigarettes on me, right? I was like actually using it to quit smoking. Uh, it didn't work too well. I was still kind of on and off for a little bit, kind of drifting in and out of vaping and, and smoking. But that was what it was, was like an ego with a pro tank. But I don't think that's what it was called. It was, way, it was a really long time ago. Because like, like I said, my father has been vaping since it literally began. He's, he's been vaping the longest out of anyone I've ever met. Um, you know, he's just been doing it ever since the technology first came out. And he's been following it religiously. And he's the one that got me into it. The Aspen Valley Vapes article is under the blog tab at the top of the page and go to the bottom and skip page 23. I had to use it. Ah, well, well, 
We'll forget about them. Who cares? Are you going to remix the crack pie? I might. I might. It's kind of weird. I don't really know what the fuck they're doing in here. There's almost like a coconut flavor I'm getting from it. It's pretty good, though. Um, but I might. We'll see. Oh, you had a kid. Oh, good for you, man. Good for you. I didn't know you had a... I didn't know. What? That's crazy. That's getting small. I was the man. <laughs> good for you, man. Congrats. Congrats, dude. Well, I hope you st I hope you start reviewing and stuff again. I, I know it's a little rough right now, but you probably got a lot of, you know, you probably don't have a lot of time. I don't know. I don't know if you'd be able to do it, but I don't know. I don't, I don't have kids. I don't know what it's like. Maybe it's a good way to get your mind off kid life. All right, let's mix. Let's mix. So, yeah, dude, haters. Haters, man. Metal Gear was never a hater. You, you had some haters. Metal Gear, Metal Gear knows about some haters. You had some haters. Me and you both, man. Me and you both. All right, so French dude. Actually, let's do this first. Let's vape a little French dude first and, and figure out his defining characteristic. This is actually a surprisingly decent uh, e-liquid, uh, which is why I kind of wanted to try my hand at it. Um, we've pretty much made a much better version of this in an old live mixing where we did a blueberry bakery. That one's banging. So you can really just vape that, but we're going to do our best to try to match what this is which is supposed to be um, a blueberry French toast. The blueberry French toast. There are some off notes with crack pie that I'm not a big fan of, but we'll, we might tackle that another time. Ow, man, I just got, just popped on my tongue and burned. Uh, drip a little bit of the French do. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Now, I wanna, what I want to figure out is if they're using waffle. If they're using TFA waffle or TFA Belgian waffle. I also got pancake here. Look how dark pancake is. That's liquid. That's not, <laughs> that's not the color of the bottle. It's actually the liquid. It, it, it's so dark, man. It's like molasses. What keyboard is that, Wayne? This is the Corsair K70 with the MX clears, which are the MX speeds. Um, I really like the MX speeds. I used to be an MX uh, uh, blue fan and an MX brown fan, but now I'm, I'm digging the MX speeds. I can, I'm literally at 104 words per minute on my typing speed. I'm a pretty fast typer practicing for the past year plus I write a lot um, and the MX speeds have drastically improved my speed typing so we're gonna taste a little bit the Belgian waffle it's got like a really almost like cinnamon like esque it's like a it's like a waffle with syrup but like a dusting of brown sugar and cinnamon God damn it. Definitely blueberry, uh, Flavor West blueberry. Definitely Flavor West blueberry. I might need to switch these batteries out. That's what's going on here. Your mom's beaver. I'm working on French toast recipe and Flavor West caramel cinnamon roll is a good start. I have that. I do have that. I picked it up specifically for this.
it's, it's like pretty good, man. French, they did a pretty good job on French, dude. It's well balanced. It's not too heavy on the blueberry. It's not too heavy on the waffle. Um, it's not like a crazy complex recipe by any means, but it's good. Plus, it gives you like a good amount of e-liquid. I think it gives you 60 mils with um, like they give you a little unicorn. Or they might give you more than that. I'm not sure. I think it's just 60 mils. It's good. It is good. I also got blueberry graham waffle here. Like, are they using this? I don't think they are. I don't think they are. That one's weird. It's got like a... That one's just weird. See, I got regular TFA waffle. This is a, this is like a regular, just a regular plain waffle where this one does taste like it has some like a dusting of brown sugar and of uh, uh, some cinnamon on it, which is awesome. Uh, bring up the uh, description here French dude by vape breakfast classics now available same company by pancake man uh, Fanta cream from grown company French dude by uh, you know, French toast blueberries and whipped cream with then dabs and delicious and savory maple syrup woo what a description it doesn't really tell you too much uh, wow this is a really long description that's what it looks like if you want to go buy it they give you a sticker too. They give you a sticker and a keychain. <laughs> a fucking stupid ass keychain. Uh, definitely some super sweet is gonna be needed. Um, some blueberry. Now what I really wanna know is, are they using butter? Are they using TFA butter? Do you know any recipes for a Starbucks vanilla frap? Uh, there's a mint chocolate, white chocolate mint frap by Skittles. This is pretty good. I don't think they're using butter. So we're going to put that away. I think they're using custard. I think they're using custard. I don't know how much they're using of Belgian waffle, though. It's a, it's a good, it's well balanced. It's well balanced. So we got a, a, we got a thread here on Reddit and see what this person's using it at. I'm using it pretty high, 8%. This was two years ago by Hey Sup. Interesting. That's, seems a little high. How much do you think? It's pretty dark. Belgian waffle, a little bit of custard. A little bit of graham cracker maybe. Maybe some pancake, maybe a little pancake. Maybe. We'll try it. We'll try it. Fucking Chris DVR's fucking recipe, man. Jesus. Look at that. Little fucking butt. Little butthole. Little butthole on the screen. I mean, I'm down with a little butthole action. No nothing wrong with that. But it's like... He's the BuzzFeed of mixing. Chris DVR is the BuzzFeed of mixing. There it is. There you go. Chris DVR, you're the BuzzFeed of mixing. How do you feel about that? How do you feel about that, Chris? All right. So we're going to have to put this here. 
And let's do this thing. What's going on here? Why does this look like that? Oh. Ooh, I see. I see. That's quite all right. That's quite all right. Oh, Adept Sidewalks. That's a pretty good name. Let's go with... Um, oh, we're just going to have to name it French Dude Remix. Hashtag Remix Month. Greetings from Ukraine. What is your favorite build for best flavor in Hadley? A Fuse Clapton. Six wraps. About 0 0.8 ohms. 40, 50 watts. Bada bing, bada boom. I like it. Would like to see some bakery rich favorites from you, like a German chocolate cake or a Butterfinger. That French clone site has a remix of the recipe, I think. Uh, La Poix DIY. Did you try Barista Brucio? It's salted caramel macchiato. Ooh, interesting. I do not. I have to. I would have to try it to be able to help you out on that. Adam's Blueberry Muffin on ATF. We could take a look at that. We can give Adam a little shout out. Are you saying Adam's like, like Adam McCree? Or are you saying, um, oh, Adam's Blueberry Muffin. Here it is by Kaz. 514. Let's see what he's using here. Cake batter, 1%. He's got flavor buzz, blueberry, 4%. That's pretty much where I'm going to go. A little Capella sugar cookie meringue, hazelnut. Nice. I think uh, that's a pretty damn good recipe. That's probably much more of a, of a muffin than a French toast. Because sugar cookie and a little bit of cupcake, yeah, that's going to give you like a more airy and fluffy bakery. Where what we want is kind of a dense eggy french toast um but shout out to cause 514 recipe looks good so we're definitely going to be using some flavor west blueberry we're going to use it at four percent I, I i'm thinking maybe even higher but for now we'll go four percent and we're going to give it a little bit a little bit of the belgian waffle wow i spelled that i spelled that right I'm thinking another 4% there. And then maybe like 1% TFA custard. Because there's like a buttery flavor from it. Butter, nice buttery flavor. We can even go higher on that, but I'm just going to go 1% on there. What are you doing? What are you doing? Mom? Mom is here? Is she here? Oh my god, it's going nuts. And then, um. Yeah, she's here! She's here! Okay, go look at the room. <laughs> Say hi to the internet. I thought that you were doing it. No, I am definitely doing it. <laughs> Alright, now let's go, uh. I don't think there's any graham cracker in it, man. I don't. I don't. I don't think so. I want to go pancake. I just want to try it. I just want to see what it's going to do. This is a remix anyway. Let's try a TFA pancake at a half a percent. And then we'll do another half a percent of some super sweet... And that's it. We'll call it a day there. So that's 10% total. That's 10% total. That looks better, right? Told you. Told you. French fellow, yes. Yes, that's on my website, actually. So if you guys uh, want to go check out his recipe, uh, uh, methods, uh, Joel's recipe, check it out. I want to say this is all we're going to need, Doc. 
I want to say it. I'm going to say it now. I don't think it's too difficult. I mean, there's not too much going on. Is there cinnamon in it, though? Like, is there actually cinnamon in it? I don't know. We're just going to go like this with it. Where'd my bottle go? Oh. We're just going to go like this with it. Fuck what you boy. Rage has been trying to clone that shit forever. For forever, right? Oh wait, we're not making 55 mils. We're making 25. I'm going one. Hmm. Actually, I don't even want nicotine. Oh, flavor roast blueberry, so good. It's so good. It's so good. I only have cap waffle on hand. Any recommendations on the sub? I don't know if you're going to be able to sub it, man. But I would do the same percentage. Okay. Okay. Custard is going to add some egginess, which is what we need. Not too much. A little egginess and butterness. And we're going to do a little waffle. And that's it, man. Went off four. A little sweetener. Can't forget that. No Nick this time. Just PGVG. Perfect. I would say the colors are a little similar here. This does look a little darker. Maybe they're using a little bit more pancake. Because that juice is pretty damn dark. We'll see. If you've never seen this channel before... This is how easy it is to mix. Takes two seconds, man. It's not difficult. It's not rocket science. It's easy. It's easy, it'll save you money. Fuck with your boy. Don't forget, there's a Steam sale going on. All you gamers out there. All you fucking gamers. All you gamers out there. Shout out, Jack Vapes. Shout out to the boy, Jack Vapes. Thank you so much, my dude. All you gamers out there. Steam sale going on. Go pick up some games. I bought Transistor. I bought a bunch of indie games. Transistor. I bought Hyper Light Drifter, which I've been playing a little bit of. It's pretty fun. I bought... And now I'm thinking about getting Wildlands and uh, some other game. I forget. Oh, Grim Dawn. Path of Exile is for free right now, I think. Um, so, hey, if you like indie games, the Steam sale is really good. If you like AAA titles, you can get games for like 20, 30% off.
Haters. Fucking haters, man. Haters, man. Okay. Okay. Let's do this. Give this a little smell. Actually, it kind of does smell like they're using Capella Vanilla Custard. It kind of does. This smells a lot better, to be honest. This has like that plastic smell to it. Like butyric, like Capella V2. You make producing live content like this look so easy while it's all skill and hard work. Respect and love to you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, stars and clouds. Pip, I believe, right? Is that a name, Pip? It is a lot of hard work. It is a lot of hard work, but I love it. It's not, you don't work a day in your life if you love what you do. So I got the best gig, I got the best gig there is. Get out of here. And what else do you have? Ow. The best, what Stop else? dripping. What? I got the best fiance ever as well. That's what I was looking for. Get out of here. No. You're bothering me. No. Ah. No. Ow. <laughs> it's not bad. But it's not French, dude. But is it blueberry French toast? That's the question. It's, it doesn't have the density. It needs like more pancake maybe. I use OBS. That's what I use, OBS and that's it. Just OBS. I've been doing this a while guys. It took me a while to get like in the hang of producing this stuff. I've been doing this a long time. Not that long. <laughs> what? Get her out of here. <laughs> get her out of here, boy. Tell her, go get her. Get her. Get her. Okay, bye. <laughs> I think French lo dude is loaded with dap. I would agree. This is really good, but it's not heavy. It needs to be heavier. And I think the dap is what's going to do it, yo. The blueberry needs to sit a little bit as well. Should we just add a couple more drops of pancake and just see what the fuck happens? Yellow cake, maybe? Maybe it's yellow cake. It does taste like it's missing yellow cake, and that's pretty much it. Shout out to fishing and vaping. Fishing and vaping, yellow cake, French vanilla, strawberry, strawberry right. What RDA are you using now? I am using the Hadley. The Hadley RDA. Best RDA in the game. Shout out to Cyclone. You guys did good work here. It's starting to come to. It's starting to come to. It's starting to come to. Missing a little bit of that heaviness. And I'm thinking pancake might help it out. Or some custard V1, but I, there's no vanilla. I'm not missing vanilla. I'm missing like a heavier bakery. The Belgian waffle is not, it's not too heavy. It's not too heavy, dog. Let's see. Let's see what, um, what Joel's recipe calls for. He helped us out on the, on the, uh, 
He helped us out on the, um, what is it called? God damn it. I forget the name of it. The Duchess, right? He did some good work on the Duchess. So let's see his work on. Nice. Yeah. Are you making that tonight? No. Oh. Get out of my face. I'm doing something. French vanilla creme. Belgian waffle too. Oh, in a where's waffle. Ooh, Let's go back to French dude. Let's taste the French dude. See what's missing. I would say this is a success. Basically, it, it hits the, the blueberry French toast. It does. It's like a blueberry French toast with a little bit of powdered sugar on top. But it's not like a heavy French toast. It's not like dr like drenched in maple syrup. I'm kind of missing like a maple syrup note. And I think TFA maple syrup might just be the answer or something like that. Or something to give it like a stickiness. And it's, it needs to get sticky. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Martin Burke. Shout out to Martin Burke. Left for dead. Two pound. No, the show got a strike, but it'll be it'll be re-uploaded as soon as it's done processing. I have to uh, cut that part out, and it just it's just taking a while to process for some reason. Uh, not a strike, um, um, clean. <laughs> I want to say it's missing pancake, so you know what? I'm dripping some pancake in there. So. That's what I want to say it's missing. We're going to add another half a percent. So this is what you do. You want to add another flavoring in to your already mixed bottle. You put the full bottle in and you just drip it in. So we're going to add another 0.13. Now we're gonna go a little bit more. So 0 0.26. 0 0.26, which is gonna give us about one and a half percent. A total of pancake. That still might be a little low, but that's one and a half. We'll see if it gets us anywhere closer. What kind of pop filter are you using? There's a music shop down by me that sells them. This is pretty cool because it kind of rotates to anything you want and sticks. Uh, but it's it's this brand SE. I'm not really sure exactly the name of it. It's got two parts to it. So you got the regular pop and then you got the kind of the screen. It's nice. I like it because it sticks. Whenever I move it, it don't, it don't fucking move. It's a good pop filter. Now that looks a lot more similar, don't you think? In color. That one's still a little bit darker, but maybe it just needs a steep. We got, we're getting hit with sex bots. Oh no, not the sex bots again. Smells a little bit closer. That did seem to do it. 
It did bring it a lot closer. I think we got it. I'm trying to vape the rest of this off. I think we got it. I think it was just missing a pancake. Joel. You need pancake in your recipe. Remember, these are by the guys who made Pancake Man. They made an entire pancake e-juice. They gotta be using some leftover pancake flavoring, right? Plus it's dark as shit. Look how dark that is. That's it, guys. Let's try theirs one more time. See see how close we are. Ours is this one's way better. Mine's way better. Mine's way better. A hundred percent better. Are you ever going to release the rose milk recipe? Yes. When great show as always. Keep up the excellent work. Peace. Have a great safe weekend. You too as well, David. No one shows love to PRY4 V1 anymore. I, you know what? I, I really like P, uh, V1. I do. I really do. I went a little bit heavier on the dessert on V2. I wanted more of a dessert flavor. But V1 is fucking great. This got really dark really quickly, but it's it's still not as dark as theirs. Maybe because it's in the uh, maybe because it's in the frosted bottle. No. Let's drip ours one more time. That's really close. I would say about 85%, 90% there with just a little bit. There's a little bit of a, um, of like an artificial flavor coming from this one. Almost like an artificial, like, it tastes like they're using Capella, which I don't want to use because it, I don't want, I don't know if they're using that because there's no like vanilla note. There's, there, we're missing like one flavoring um, and I'm not really sure what it is. But I would say we're about 85, 90% there. I'll call that a success. And I also think that this one's much better in flavor. It has like a much better, um, it just has a better vape from it. It doesn't have like any off notes. Where this one, it does give me a bit of like a plastic flavor, like all artificial, like it's over sweetened or something. So they're over comp uh, compensating on something. This one's got nice fluffy, the pancake really adds a bread. It adds like a cake, like a bready cake. And um, that was kind of missing at just 0 0.5. If it steeps a little bit and changes drastically, then it's probably good at a half a percent. Um, but I didn't want to wait. I kind of wanted to get it immediately. So right now, one and a half percent of pancake. And then I guess maybe just dropping like, that's it. And then that's it. You're good.
Sorry. It's good, dude. It's good, dude. I would mix this up at a higher VG also. 70 VG maybe. Actually, that pancake is starting to bring a weird, like, off note. I think, I think it was probably better the first time around. Well, after it, like, I'm not sure. It's weird. Something weird going on. It just probably needs just to sit. All right, guys. So I'm getting out of here. I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Remember, fuck the haters. Do you. Make your money. Make your art. Make your life. Do good things. Be a good person. And um, just keep mixing, man. Just keep mixing. We're having a blast over here. We're doing big things. Last night's podcast will be up soon. I'll catch you guys Monday with some excellent, excellent content. We've got some more clones to knock out. I want to see some more clones on the Facebook page. So if you guys are working on any remixes, put them up there, and you'll be featured on the website. Also, there's going to be a weekend assignment for you guys, which uh, I didn't get to explain. But what I want to do is take those weekend assignments and start implementing them into live mixing so uh, you'll see the weekend assignment and i'll write up what i'm talking about in there so i know a lot of you guys like to, to mess around on that but um yeah that's it guys keep mixing much love join the discord peace out